So hey everyone and welcome back and today I'm going to be showing you how to do the vibe style in Premiere Pro. For this you will need the Sapphire and also the BCC plugin so yeah let's get started. First of all you want to create your sequence and you want to make sure that when you head over to the sequence settings your time base is set to 15 frames per second. Once you have done that make sure you have your clips ready I've got them all right here. So the first thing we are going to do is create three adjustment layers. These specific ones right here so this is number one, number two looks like this and number three looks like this. Now of course you have to first of all create your adjustment layer so I'm just going to right click over here, head over to new item adjustment layer and I'm going to set the time base to 60 fps. Click on ok and drag the adjustment layer onto your timeline and you want to trim it down to one frame. I'm going to move the other two out of the way so we can just concentrate on the first one for now. So the first effect you want to use is the warp transform effect and you want to just drag it onto the adjustment layer. You want to head over to shift xy and you want to pull the first value to the left until you start seeing the clip move to the left and you want to place it around the center. Once you have done that you want to set the wrap x and also the y to title and what it's going to do is mirror the clip. You then want to add the sapphire directional blur effect. Set the blur amount to 50 and the angle to 0. So now you should get some horizontal blur. And finally you want to add the wave warp effect the original not the sapphire version. You want to set the wave type to noise, the wave height to 20 and the wave width to around 200. The direction should be 0 degrees and the pinning should be at all edges. So yeah that's the first adjustment layer. We now need to make the second second one and this one is going to go vertical instead so all you need to do is just duplicate the adjustment layer and we're going to change a couple of settings so I'm going to reset the shift xy back to what it was originally and I'm going to change the second value instead and pull it down and as I do pull it down you can see that it's moving upwards and you want to just keep it at the middle just like there. Head over to the directional blur and change the angle to 90 and the same goes for the wave warp just change the direction to 90 as well. Now you want to duplicate the adjustment layer again but get rid of all the effects and once it's is empty you want to add the warp transform effect once again. Set the Z dist to 1.4 and change the wrap X and Y to reflect. So once you do change both of them to reflect you can see that it reflects all around. Next up you want to add the warp fisheye effect as well and you want to change the amount to negative 0.2 and finally you want to add the blur motion effect as well and all you want to do is scroll down until you find the to Z dist and change that to 0.9. Do not change the from Z dist only the to Z dist and you're going to get this motion blur effect. So now we have our key adjustment layers which we are going to use. Since the clips that you are using are going to be different to what I am, just follow along and see what I do and apply it with your clips as well if that makes any sense. So basically whatever works best for you. At the beginning I'm going to keep the first one frame, I'm going to move towards the end, I'm going to apply the uh, fish eye effect and then the vertical one so it should go fish eye effect and then the vertical transition. I'm going to duplicate the vertical transition for the second clip. Right now it does look really weird and that's because I have not scaled it in because it has black bars and so what I'm going to do is just scale it in to get rid of the black bars and so if I do scale it in as you can see it's going to look different. Now it no longer has that black bar in the middle. I'm also going to do the same thing for the rest of my clips and scale them in. Now what we can do is apply the one frames later on to the other clips but first of all we need to add a scale. For the sake of this video I'm only going to use scale outs. So I'm going to head towards the beginning, scale it in around 200 and head towards the end and then just reset it. If you do click on this arrow over here you can graph your scales. I've already made a video on this if you want to know how to but all you need to do is just pull the handle and make sure it's on the same level as the bar next to it and just pull it to the left and I'm going to leave it around here. I've also just realized that I reset it with the black bar so I'm just going to change the last keyframe to 134 and then pull it all the way to the end. So now you should get something like this, a scale out. What I'm going to do is just copy this scale so I'm just going to right click on the motion bit and it should say copy so I'm just going to click on that, head over to my next clip and then just right click over here and click on paste. So now as you can see it's been applied to my second clip. I'm also going to just pull back this keyframe and then copy it once again and just apply it to every single clip. In fact every single clip except for this one because instead of scaling out it's going to like move to the right. So I'm going to leave that one, I'm just going to move on to the next clip and just paste and the final one and there you go. Now what we need to do is improve the scale so first of all I'm going to highlight all of these small frames that I have made and I'm just going to bump them up to the third video layer. I'm going to put a new adjustment layer and just trim it to around three frames. So this one right here it should go one, two, three and it doesn't so I'm just going to expand it. So one, two, three and what I'm going to do now is add the warp transform effect onto this empty adjustment layer. Keyframe the Z disk and I'm going to set it to 0.6. Head about two keyframes ahead and then reset it. Do the same thing. We're going to graph it just like that. Once you let go it should look like this and I'm just going to pull it 
it all the way to the end. So if I do play it back, as you can see, my scale looks much better than before. I'm going to duplicate this adjustment layer on top of every clip that has a scale on. So the third and also the fourth as well. Now for this clip, I have not added a scale and instead I'm going to keyframe the position and just pull it to the left. I'm going to go to the end and just pull it to the right, which then reveals the characters. And again, I'm going to graph this. So I'm just going to pull it all the way to the right. So if I do play it back, as you can see, it goes to the right instead. Now what we can do is apply the adjustment layers that we did make at the beginning. So from this clip to the next, as you can see, it goes to the right. So I'm just going to find the one at the beginning. And as you can see, it goes to the to the like right and also to the left. Or should I just say that it's horizontal? So I'm just going to duplicate this and place it towards the end of the clip. So if I do play it back, you can see that it's a nice one frame there because it goes to the right. I'm also going to duplicate this adjustment layer right there. I'm then going to empty it and remove every effect. And this is optional, but what I've done is applied the warp vortex effect. You can probably tell, but it's like a distortion effect. So if you want to, you can just copy down my settings. So for the vortex start, it's negative 10. Uh, I think I also changed the inner radius. I also did change the center XY and move it over here towards the left. You can do this if you want to. It gives a nice effect, like a push type of effect. I'm going to duplicate this adjustment layer one more time onto the right and also empty it again. And this time I'm going to add some different effects. The first one is S underscore scan lines. Change the lines frequency to 25 and the sharpness to 0.2. Duplicate it again and empty it one more time. This time you're going to add the JPEG damage effect and you want to set the quality to 0.02 and now if I do play it back you can see that I've added some glitch effects as well now if you do take a look at this part over here the scale looks good but we can improve that so I'm just going to head back to the third adjustment layer that we made the one that like kind of zooms out I'm going to duplicate it and add it towards the end of my clip so when it does scale out it has this fisheye effect before it's like a pinch effect and then the next clip scales out so it looks like this you can't really notice it but it does make it look better I'm going to apply two more effects towards the end of this clip so it's going to be the one with the fisheye effect and also the vertical transition so towards the end it should go fisheye and then vertical transition and then onto the next one in fact i'm actually going to duplicate the vertical transition onto the final clip so just above here as you can see i'm going to search for the invert effect underneath channel and just add it onto the adjustment layer and i'm going to change the channel to hls now if you do play back what we have done so far it should look like this the next thing we need to do is add some shakes so you want to search for the s shake effect and drag it onto your clip in fact you can actually get rid of that and instead you can download the preset that i have link will be in the description below it's basically s shake but everything is empty so basically all these settings have been reset to zero and i've also added a graph so then your shakes look really smooth you can always pull the last keyframe all the way to the end but once you do have my preset for s shake we want to do is head over all the way to the end we're going to modify the tilt shake so i'm just going to change the tilt wave amp to one and also the wave frequency to one as well in fact i think two is better for the wave amp it gives a nice shake effect you can also turn on motion blur if you want to i'm going to copy this effect onto the second clip so now both of these clips have some shakes for the third one i'm going to apply another empty shake move the keyframe towards the end and i'm only going to change the y shake i'm going to set it to 15 and the wave frequency should be one you do not want to change the randoms so you need to change the wave amps only if it doesn't look that good you can change it to 25 and also turn on the motion blur i'm going to apply another empty shake onto my next clip move the keyframe towards the end and over here we are going to change the x shake so i'm going to set it to 25 and the frequency to one and you're going to get a horizontal shake you can't really notice it so i'm going to turn on motion blur of course if it's not that effective you can change it up to 40 and now if i do play it back it's a little more effective as you can see and for the final clip all i did was just apply the same one as i did to the first now playing this back so far it looks really good but we can make some changes you want to search for the bcc lens blur obs effect and just drag it onto your clip oh and by the way this is the first clip anyways you want to change the quality to sharper you want to change the iris scale to something like 4 and you want to change the gamma to 800 with the iris scale you want to keyframe and graph it so the same things i've done with these scales and other effects keyframe it to something high at the beginning set it to zero towards the end and just simply graph it pull the handle to the left let go i'm going to copy this effect and apply it to every single clip so just right click copy head over to each clip and just right click and paste now once you have done all of that you have one more thing to do and that is to add exposure so head over to the lumetri color tab and you want to turn up the exposure to either two or three and now if you do head back to effect controls and scroll all the way down you're going to see lumetri color there and you just want to open up the basic correction keyframe the exposure head towards the end set it to zero and graph it simply just like that so i've set it to three at the beginning 
zero at the end and all i've done is graph it and that's it to finish it off apply it to every single clip so i'm just going to copy and paste it to every single one same for this one as well and also that one over there now i cannot play it back as my recording software will crash but on the screen you can see the rendered version and it looks insanely good but anyways that's all you need to do i've been recording this for 14 minutes but thank you for watching have a great day and i will see you in the next video so yeah peace